morning dish. He's the hardest working man in show business. His band's music takes you into the midnight hours. And when you wake up, his voice is back on your radio alarm clock. How on earth did this happen? Well, Jeff saw me taking out the trash at the radio station. And he won another award. But this one is better. I'm your food man. That's what I am. It's the Morning Dish with the 2019 Radio Personality of the Year winner, Stephen Phillips. You paying attention to this, Packy? And Murphy's own Sherry Rains. Yeah, you must have given horseback passes to the right guy, Stephen. Well, giddy up. <laughs> And Packy Smith's Shetland Pony is right alongside. You guys know these demo tapes don't just edit themselves together, right? Well, all right. Three cheers for Stephen Phillips. Y'all need to help Stephen Phillips out over there. Out the door and off the radio. Here's Stephen Phillips. Folks, this morning we have got Barry Corbin. Good morning. How are you, sir? I'm doing real good. How are you doing? I would just tickle to death get to talk to you after all the movies that we've watched you in. It's just exciting. Absolutely. You've had such an illustrious film career. Well, uh, yeah, if you stick around long enough, you do a bunch of them. Yeah. <laughs> you hang around all you can, man. I'm telling you, you know, I guess, you know, there's so many favorites watching you in, you know, and, and uh, I mean, you're just an outstanding actor any which way you can. I mean, golly, I love that movie. Wonderful film. Yeah, I, I enjoyed doing that. I enjoyed flying that plane upside down. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. <laughs> I bet. That's about the way I fly. <laughs> you know what we did? Uh, what we did on that, they did it in uh, in the studio in Warner Brothers, and they had this mock-up uh, uh, cockpit thing, and they just uh, turned the thing upside down. They just turned it like it was on the turntable. Right. So we were right side up, and all of a sudden they turned around upside down, and all these paper clips and uh, various other <laughs> things ran up my nose. <laughs> oh, my, that sounds like quite the experience. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Going up ain't too bad. It's coming back out, I don't guess. But do you, have any, do you have any films that you've worked on that were particular favorites of yours that you're exceptionally proud of? Well, I'll tell you what. Some of them, uh, I, I, I enjoyed. Some of the best ones were, were the most uh, difficult to make. Some of the most fun ones were the worst ones. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's like uh, somebody asked me, which of my kids is my favorite? Well, I love them all equally, but some of them's ugly. Yeah. Well, now, whose fault's that? Is that yours or the wife's? <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's probably mine. Okay. Uh, I got uh, uh, I got the, I got kids from uh, three different mothers. Right. They're all uh, they're they're actually they're not even that ugly. They're all good looking. Oh yeah. <laughs> then uh, then I got uh, I got a bunch of grandkids and great grandkids too, which is uh, which is always a treat to see them grow up. Man, I can. Imagine. How many grandkids do you have? Uh, let's see, nine. Wow. I've just got started on my first one. I've got a two-year-old little girl that's absolutely spoiled rotten. If they don't get another one, they ain't going to be nobody to be able to put yeah. up with Well, it. I don't ever see mine hardly because they got to shut down out here. Mm-hmm. And uh, some, of, some of mine live here in, uh, in Fort Worth, but their parents are scared to bring them around because they're scared I might uh, infect them somewhere or another. Yeah, mm-hmm. get them into some bad habits. Well, now, is the last thing that you they, do what now? They claim it's because they might infect me, but I don't believe that. I think they're afraid I'll infect them. Yeah, that's all right. That's all we got to see, Pop. They call you Papa, or what do they call you? Uh, well, my my youngest, my grandson uh, called, couldn't say Grandpa, so he said Mampa. So they all called me Mampa. There you Aww, go. Aw, that's go. cute. That's different. Yeah, mine calls me Papa, so I'm all about that. But uh, Now, the latest yeah. thing you worked on, I, I'm thinking, now you tell me if I'm right or wrong, was The Ranch. That's the thing on... Uh, on uh, no, no, I've worked on a couple of things since then. Right. Uh, one of them was... Uh, was uh nine one one uh something Texas and I I don't remember the name of it, but right. we did we did that thing. I played at one of the guys' fathers. I'm always somebody's father. Tom Bosley said he's all he used to be somebody's father all the time, now he's everybody's grandfather. Right. <laughs> and I'm getting up to the age now where I'm gonna be everybody's grandfather, I guess. Oh, well, that's all right. I love the right I don't really care. No, the, the, actually, the last thing I did was a, a thing called Yellowstone. Right, right. Okay. Uh, which hadn't had marriage yet. I just uh, did it. Uh, uh, I don't know, 
few weeks ago. Oh, wow. So I, guess it was, I guess it was the day before my birthday I did it. Well, hey so there. October 15th. All right. Well, happy belated birthday to you. Thank you. That's Thank wonderful. You. I, just, I, I just turned uh, turned eighty, so I'm uh, I'm uh, going into I'm I'm going into a deal where I want to get uh, uh, as old as uh, Norman Lloyd. There you go. Well, he's uh, one hundred and six. Well, now my daddy said he's at the age. My daddy's eighty four. He said he's at the age now where he's counting down instead of counting up. So I guess he's gone. Yeah. Over the hump well, there. I, I, people ask me what my birthday is, and I give them a math test. I say I'm, I just celebrated the the thirtieth anniversary of my fiftieth birthday. There you go. <laughs> I like that one. Now I read. Tell us if this is true. Did your mother name you for J M Barry? That's right. Okay. Yeah, and my, my actually my name on my birth certificate is B A R R I E. For for Mr. Barry, who of course uh, was the author of Peter Pan. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Mother was fascinated by that book. She thought I wasn't ever going to grow up. She was right. Yeah, that's all right, man. I'm with you on that. Ain't no fun when you grow up at all. So. Uh-uh. Does she does she have a clue that you was going to get into the uh, being a in the movie business, being an actor? Well, not back in those days, but it didn't take too long to figure it out. Right. And now, how did you go from horse competitions into the film industry? Those just seem like very different uh, careers to me. Uh, well, I was I'm probably the only guy in Lubbock, Texas, that at the same time was working on oil rigs in the in, in the uh, graveyard shift from uh, midnight to eight, and taking uh, uh, ballet lessons in the afternoon. Oh, <laughs> oh my word! <laughs> I'm gonna tell probably you that's both. Else, uh, anybody anybody who has the nerve to do that's got to learn how to fight. <laughs> I'm fixed to say, man, that's like extreme so. different directions. But it, you have to be tough to do either one of them, man. That's hard work. Of course, I don't know about standing on my toes. I've had my st- toes stepped on a few times. but <laughs> Yeah, well, I, you know, the guys don't stand on their toes. The only reason they let me do it is because I was strong enough to lift them women up. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, and I uh, I was the only guy in there who was interested in women anyway. Yeah, well, that kind of <laughs> helped you out a lot, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, I didn't have any competition in that deal. There you go. Okay, so you're working on an oil rig, playing Twinkle Toes afterwards, yeah. and then how do you make your way out to Hollywood from there? Well, I, it, it was a very secure this route. I went to Chicago first and did uh, some did a little bit of theater there, and then I went down south to uh, North Carolina and did an outdoor drama, and then I did, went to work in uh the University of uh, of uh, of Carolina, the Carolina State University. Sure. Uh, they had a they had a deal there. The artist residents, which they called us, uh, uh, faculty members, but we didn't teach. We just acted in the plays. Right. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I went to a theater in uh, Virginia where I got my equity card, and then I went to New York. Wow. I was in New York for about 10 years, back and forth. I'd, I'd go off, I'd work in, sometimes I'd work in New York. Mainly I worked outside New York. And, was uh, that, a lot, was that and, in a lot of theater, like plays and things like that? or? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, a whole bunch of it. And uh, I've worked under every equity contract, I think, that there is. Unless they got a contract for jugglers. I didn't work under that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, there's nothing wrong with that. You could probably done it. You could have probably done it. You know, some of these movies, I mean, that you have been in, like, uh, you know, you work with Tom Sellis in that uh, Monty Wash. I mean, that's a huge movie. Burt I love Reynolds. that. Burt Reynolds. Yeah. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I like those westerns. I had to, I had to uh, do a thing called Conacher one time. They hired me to do that. I was supposed to drive a stagecoach. Right. Well, usually the uh, movie stage coaches are set up where they got a blind driver inside the coach, and uh, you know where the actual reins that you, uh, you know, working with the horses uh, on the lines go inside the coach. And he's he's looking through in a little hole and seeing where he's going. Right. And the guy up in the box just got some uh, some lines that he's fooling with, uh, but. Uh, uh, I got to this location, and the uh, fella says, uh, well, you drive a six-up, don't you? And I said, what? 
No, I've driven two, and I've never driven more than two. He said, well, you're going to drive six in this one. Oh, Lord. Wow. And I said, what do you mean? Where's the blind driver? He said, not any place for a blind driver. <laughs> so I had to learn to, to drive uh, six horses uh, in in two days. Oh, my word. Well, but and, with your uh, background in horses, did that help you a little bit there? Well, that's like kind of asking somebody who rides horseback. Uh, it, I mean, that's at, like asking a motorcycle rider if he can uh, drive a, uh, uh, an 18-wheeler. Right. Mm, okay. Back it up and turn it around. So, yeah. I mean, there's a, there's a big difference in, in uh, controlling <laughs> six <laughs> big draft horses and one, one border horse. Well, I'm going to tell you, I tried that horseback riding for a while. I actually even bought me a, a big Tennessee walker, and I, I figured out real quick, I, I ain't no cowboy. I ain't even cut out to be a cowboy. <laughs> I, well, I love it. I, I have a hard time getting on them anymore, but I, I once I get up there, I remember everything. Yeah, mine was stump broke. I'm kind of short, so I had to find a stump to get up on mine, and so it, it knew that when, <laughs> yeah. I, when I wanted to ride. Well, I, I, I had to, uh, I, I, old Ben Johnson told me uh, before he died, he said, well, on a cold morning, I got to lead him over to a fence and get on that way. Yeah. <laughs> well, now, and, uh, don't tell anybody about that, though. He's been dead for a long time, so I can tell people about it now. <laughs> we, won't let, we won't let the secret out. Now, you were you an ur- urban cowboy, too? Yep, that was my first studio movie. Wow, John Travolta, the founder of country music. We used to laugh about that back in the day when uh, but that was a, <laughs> that was a big thing. I turned, uh, I turned thirty nine in the uh, during the shoot of that. Right. Wow. <laughs> so that's been uh, forty one years ago. Man. All right. What's the most interesting thing that's happened to you in the showbiz realm? Uh. Oh gosh, just getting the job is the biggest <laughs> challenge there is. Find somebody to pay you to do it. Jeez. You can I work as so. much as you want to for free. That's but, it. You know, I decided a long time ago that I don't want to do that because it's, uh, you know, you, you get up to a point and you don't care what your resume says anymore. Sure. Well, you know, I, I just seem to be. Hungry as I had tired and hungry. If they ain't gonna pay me anything, I can sit at the house and starve, and I have to get out and do anything. So yeah, well, I, I uh, uh, this this ain't going out to, to California or anything. So I'll tell you this: I'd do it for free, but don't tell anybody. I ain't going to. <laughs> you just love the art of it all, huh? Yeah. I told uh, I told one of the this actor one time he was talking about boy all this waiting around. This is boring. I, I don't know why. I said, well, hell, that's what they pay you for. You do the acting for free. You, 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 your time is what they're paying you for. Yeah, they're, they're and wait. There is a lot of standing around, I mean, in movies and all that. So what, what, yeah. are, you, so you, what are you doing now, I mean, during your day? You, you, got to, you get up and go get coffee and hang out with your buddies, or what do you got going on now? I'm, I'm staying in the house pretty much. I'm, I'm writing the uh, – I'm in the process. I have been in the process for about a year and a half writing the – uh, uh, writing my memoirs up until my late, latest marriage. Right. And then I'm going to write another volume on my latest marriage after I finish that one. Wow, what? that sounds interesting. Yeah. Do you have a publisher all lined up already? I got some people talking to me about it. Yeah, I haven't decided which which way I'm going to go. Well, I think that's cool. That's I think cool. that's Usually awesome. If you, if you do it, if you go through one of these university presses, they want you to turn it all over to them, and they pay you a little little bit for each book they sell. I want somebody to pay me up front. Yeah, there you go. I can't blame you for that. Get the money and run, <laughs> baby. Get the money and run. That's right. <laughs> that's right. That's where I do my movie business. I got I, Every time I make a deal where I get paid on the back end some, I don't ever get any. Yeah. Well, now let me ask you something. You've worked with some pretty interesting acts like Sam Elliott. I mean, how is he? To, is he pretty cool to hang out with? I mean. Well, Sam and I have been friends for uh, 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 35 years, I guess. Right. And uh, so, yeah, he's a good guy. He's I, like Sam. I, I haven't talked to him in a little while. He's uh, he's got, splitting his time between Oregon and California. Yeah, I think he's in California now. Hello. But uh, yeah, he's a good guy. Catherine, his wife, Catherine Ross, she's, 
she's one. I always had a crush on her, but I never saw Sam lose a fight, so I don't think yeah. <laughs> bother with that. I believe you could take him. I think that's all in the movies, man. I, yep, all well, all that's what Sam said. He said, Sam said, you outweigh me by 50 pounds. You can take me down real easy. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Huge. Well, Barry, I'm going to call you that. I hate to, but anyway, we're about to wrap this thing up because we got to get to a short break. But I sure do appreciate your time, man. We we absolutely, I mean, I think everybody that knows uh, knows you loves you, especially in your movies and stuff. Well, I, I, I'm i happy to talk to you. Now, where do you say that you're, you're, uh, you're, you're airing this? And, we're, in, uh, we're in a little town called Hawassi in North Georgia. We're in the Blue Ridge Mountains. So a lot of folks always tell me. Oh, up in the mountains. Yeah, I know that. I know that area. I did a move right outside Knoxville. It's right on the border of Georgia. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, you did. They actually, uh, trouble with the curve, Clint Eastwood, he shot that here in this area. Uh, if you ever yeah. seen that, he did that. But, uh, yeah, that's where we're at. So. This is this one I did was the night the lights went out in Georgia, and they cut me out of it. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> they, had me, they, had me, they had to lose 15 minutes. My whole park was the first 15 minutes of the movie. Oh, well, did you get and, uh, they had one? Uh, they had one shot of me. They put down a line of people standing, and I was smoking a cigar. And they and uh, I said one line, one word. I think. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I think I was, I was Bill Forth in the, in the thing because that was contractually what they had to do if they put me in the movie at all. But now, did you so get I the check? I was Bill Forth, but I was only in the movie for one line. Right. Well, did you get the check? Yep, I oh, got the check. That's all that matters. That's what matters. I, 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 don't, I don't care if I'm in the movie at all as long as I get the check. And if they got me saying one line, then I get residual. So, yep. all right. who cares? That's right. <laughs> Sheesh. Well, listen, Barry, we sure do appreciate your time, man. You are a mess. Ain't no doubt about it. All right. It's well, been a pleasure. Have a good time and, uh, and, uh, and let me know if I can ever be of any service to you of any kind. All right. We'll, well, be, we'll be calling you, you, man. We sure do appreciate you. All right. Say hi to everybody around there. All right. We will. Sure will. Take, Take care. care. Bye-bye. Folks, don't forget, you can listen online anywhere in the world at WJULradio.com. That is WJULradio.com. Or you can listen live at Lake 97.7. WJUL. And don't forget, we're going to be uploading this to the uh, YouTube channel and our Facebook page. So just go to the Morning Dish. You can listen to the show again and uh, give us a like and give us a share. We appreciate it.